Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Behind me, I got a 2015 Jeep Patriot. This thing has around 60,000 miles on it. And the customer complaint on this one is he went out this morning to turn on the heater uh, to get some warm air inside the car and it was not working. It was just uh, stuck in air conditioning mode. I went ahead and I took a look at it and uh, we've diagnosed it to be a uh, blunt door actuator failure. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the blunt door actuator. Now, before we go ahead and begin this video, guys, if you guys haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. It'll definitely help the channel grow. And with that said, let's go ahead and start on the repairs. So first thing that you're gonna wanna do, guys, and this is gonna be very difficult to show, but I'll try to get the best coverage, is you're gonna wanna come inside the driver's side, and this is uh, what you need to take off here, this lower dash cover. Now this cover is held in place by one screw there and another screw there. Go ahead and remove that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew my screws and then I'll show you guys how to pop out the panel. Now that I went ahead and I removed the screws, just to give you guys an idea, this is what they look like. I just use uh, a Phillips bit on a screw gun and we're able to remove those. Now one thing that you guys are gonna see in this video or in this particular car is that you have this LED light here. This is not a factory thing, this is something the customer installed. So you probably won't have that on your car. You can tell by the not a very good wiring job there. They just kind of put the wires everywhere. But uh, once your panel screws are removed, your panel will kind of flop like this. All you have to do is just pull out and there should be uh, two clips here. Now, this is very difficult to film guys because we gotta hold the camera with one hand and work with the other. Uh, but once you remove your panel, you can see the two screw holes that are right here on the bottom. And then right here towards the top, you have one clip and one clip here. So basically, you're going to want to pull out from here and then the opposite side right there. Uh, that'll give you a, you know, a nice idea of where to pull. Now that we're in here, I'm going to try to set up the lighting to get you guys in the best angle possible. Um, you guys will see right here where my finger is pointing. That is our actuator. And that is what we need to uh, go ahead and replace and remove. There's going to be a connector, which is right up there, and you see it has three Phillips screws. Now, you're not going to be able to get a screw gun in there, so you're going to need a short Phillips screwdriver, a little stubby one. And I'm going to try to get the camera in here at a certain angle so you guys can watch me do this, but it is kind of difficult to film here, guys. It's very limited underneath the dashboard. So let me get a few things set up here, and I'll try to show you guys how to replace this. This is probably the best angle that I can get in here for you guys. And my hand may be in the way here. So what I'm going to do is come in here and just go ahead and remove these screws. Um, I'm going to try to do this without blocking the camera. It's going to be very, very difficult, but I'm going to give it my best. Uh, got my stubby screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and take off the first out of the three Phillips screws. Now, two of these screws are very visible. Uh, this bottom one is probably the easiest one to get to that you see me removing right now. The second one is going to be this one right here up top. Um, I'll try to point it out to you guys, which is right here. And there's going to be one all the way in the back. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, this uh, camera angle isn't going to work because the camera is basically where I need to be. Um, it's almost impossible to get any access uh, in there with the camera in the way. So I'm going to have to probably cut the camera here um, and remove the screws independently. Now I'll try to do the connector for you guys while I'm underneath here. If you look at this tab, all you have to do is push down on the tab and lift up on the wiring harness. Uh, doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do that while it's in here either, but let me give it a shot. Uh, see if I can do it. There you go. So you just push in this tab right here and lift up on it. Now I'll probably show that to you once I get my actuator out of there, but I at least want to give you guys an idea of what you're doing and what you're looking for on here. So I went ahead and I removed my actuator. I'm going to go ahead and position the camera in here so you guys can see uh, where it would bolt up to. Now mine actually only had two screws, guys. I couldn't find the third screw on there. Uh, this is the actual motor itself here. And uh, it was only, uh, let me see if I can position it here. It only had the two screws. It had the one down here and the one up on top. For some reason, the third one was missing. Actually, I do apologize, it's like this. So this one here was there and this one up here. This one was non-existent. I don't know if someone's replaced this before. Maybe they missed putting in that third screw, 
not exactly sure but we only had two so if you're doing this there may be a third there may not be just kind of maybe use a mirror to look in there or you know just feel around for it this one didn't although i thought for sure it would have because when i saw my new part it did have three of the holes and i figured they would uh, all bolt up there now uh, that you got your part off here you're gonna have this little arm that you're gonna have to replace and i will mention one thing here now this is what the motor looks like without the arm and uh, this arm is going to go in there and there is i don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up but you see that uh let me see here you see that we have the frame and then you have this little white piece this little arm goes into that piece and will kind of basically reposition it because the motor only spins in one way now you got to line it up correctly in order for it to work correctly the way i like to do this is i will set it up on heater mode or ac mode on my panel and then i'll figure out which way my heat door is supposed to sit in there when it's on heat mode and I will just basically line the two up and bolt it up into place. Now it's very difficult to show this. Once again, I can't really get the camera in there. You're just gonna have to kind of fight it uh, in the blind. That's how I do it. But I just wanted to show you guys how all that works out. Now we're gonna go ahead and get our new piece, which I have here on my lift arm. So this is gonna be the new piece. And as you guys can see, this will basically bolt up there or slide on there, I should say, fairly easy. But you don't really line this up until you get the orientation of the door correct and then hook this up in there. So just make sure uh, you do that correctly before you go ahead and install it. Now I can't get the camera up there, but it's reverse order of removal, guys, uh, for installation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this figured out and bolt it up and I'll show you guys uh, once it's all set and in there. All right, guys, so we're back, and I went ahead and I installed my new piece. Now, to kind of explain how this is going to work, because it was a little bit challenging even for me, uh, what I did was I turned the key on, and I put my car on the cool mode, because the way this door works on the mechanism, the little white part, when it's all the way down, it's in AC mode. And then what I did was I plugged in my actuator before I bolted it up, made sure that the car was in ac mode and it went ahead and it spun the motor around to where the cool setting would be then what i did was i took that little white arm that you guys saw there's like a little bit of an extension where it sits on there and i lined it up with the part that goes to the heater box where the little pin was inside of the valley where it will normally ride on and then i went ahead and i set it on the little pedestal and then what i did was i took my motor lined it up uh, with the bolt holes and just basically pushed it into place and got everything lined up that way. I went ahead and I put my two bolts in there and tightened everything up. And then what I did was I let the car run for a couple minutes and then I went back from AC and heat mode uh, to test to make sure that it was working. And it was working uh, correctly. The hardest part, and it's not really that bad, it's just very difficult to sit here and explain because I don't have the air box out of the car. Just that little arm can be a little tricky, guys. Um, I would say mark it before you remove it, but sometimes the motor will fail in the middle position or in the heat mode and you'll have it set to cool and you'll never really know. So you still kind of have to finesse it. Uh, but once you get that, you know, out of the way and you get everything lined up, um, all that's really left is to bolt up your panel again. So you're just going to want to take your uh, little panel here, line it up uh, with the clip holes and go ahead and firmly press it into place. And then you're going to go ahead and reinstall your bolts down here, or your screws, I should say, that hold the panel on there. Um, it's quite simple, guys, and I do apologize in advance because this job is very difficult. It's not going to show you how to do this step by step, but at least it'll give you guys an idea of how to get it done. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. All I'm going to do now is go ahead and resecure my two screws on my panel. Um, kind of fix up the wiring that the customer installed the LEDs on uh, the way it was and this car is pretty much all set and that's how you replace a blend door actuator on a Jeep Patriot now this may be the same in a lot of uh, Jeep models guys it may be very similar to you know the smaller Jeeps I know they make uh, the Patriot and I believe uh, there's a few other little ones that are kind of in the same class they probably use the same actuator and it's the same location more than likely uh, so this video may apply to more than just one Jeep product 
Now, hopefully this video helps you guys out. I know it was a little difficult to film and I didn't show every step, but hopefully there's enough know-how in here to get you uh, through this job on your Jeep. So with that said, please comment, like, and subscribe. Definitely helps the channel grow. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys on the next repair.